What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything going on here in our country that you need to know about here on a daily basis. We got a lot to talk about here today. The presidents and Congress both getting worried that the rail strike is going to happen and cripple the American economy. Yeah, take a listen. From the beginning, the president has been very clear. Shutdown uh, is unacceptable uh, because of the impact that it would have on jobs and families uh, and farms and businesses and communities just across the country. The president is directly involved in the process and has been engaged with his team and uh, also has had conversation with members of Congress on this particular issue in case in case resolving the issue uh, in case resolving the issue falls to them as it has 18 times uh, in the last 60 years. Years, as, as you know, and you can see here, Biden is now asking Congress to avert the rail strike, warning of dire economic impact for the country. Yeah, President Joe Biden here on Monday called on Congress to intervene to avert a potential rail strike that could occur as early as December 9th. Warning of a catastrophic economic impact if railroad service ground to a halt. And a lot of railroad workers won't like if Congress actually intervenes and forces them to go to work. Biden asked lawmakers to adopt the tentative deal announced in September without any modifications or delay to avert a potential crippling national rail shutdown and added that up to 765,000 Americans could be put out of work in the first two weeks alone. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said lawmakers would take up legislation this week to prevent a catastrophic nationwide rail strike, which would grind our economy to a halt. On Monday, more than 400 groups called on Congress to intervene in the railroad labor standoff that threatens to idle shipments of food and fuel and to strand travelers while inflicting billions of dollars of economic damage. A rail traffic stoppage could freeze almost 30% of U.S. cargo shipments by weight stoke inflation and cost the American economy as much as $2 billion per day by unleashing a cascade of transport woes affecting U.S. energy, agriculture, manufacturing, healthcare, and retail sectors. President Biden says, quote, a rail shutdown would devastate our economy. Without freight rail, many U.S. industries would completely shut down. Communities could lose access to chemicals necessary to ensure clean drinking water. Farms and ranches across the country could be unable to feed their livestock. President Biden actually hailed the contract deal that includes a 24% compounded wage increase over a five-year period uh, that actually retrodates from 2020 through 2024, and five annual $1,000 lump sum payments. Workers, however, in four unions have rejected the tentative deal, while workers in eight unions have approved it. And at this point, it seems like no progress has been made with the unions that have not approved it and it seems like days just keep getting closer and closer to this deadline and uh, at this point it does look like we are going to have a rail strike without any major progress on the horizon so let me know your thoughts here in the comments and I will keep you up to date here on this and everything else. Kevin McCarthy who's the current leader of the Republicans in the House says that the Democrats could actually pick the Speaker in the House, even though the Republicans have secured the leader or the majority of the House of Representatives. He said the Democrats could pick the Speaker if the Republicans, quote, play games on the House floor. 
when it comes time to vote for the next speaker. This is because a GOP representative, GOP stands for Grand Old Party, and a nickname for the Republican Party. A GOP rep says that there's at least 20 firm no votes against Kevin McCarthy as the speaker. That could potentially be enough or would be more than enough if they don't change their vote to, to give the Democrats the majority. Uh, you can see right now the current election results is 220 for the House of Representatives for the Republicans, 213 for the Democrats. You need 218 for the majority. So you could see the Republicans just over the majority. In a recent Republican-only vote, Kevin McCarthy got um, all the votes except for 31. I believe it was 31. So there was 31 Republicans that didn't vote for him. So you can see here, if 20 or more don't vote for him, and he only got, say, 200 votes, then all 213 voted for the Democratic challenger, who is uh, probably going to be Hakeem Jeffries, probably. Um, I also I thought that Pramila Jayapal, uh, the leader of the House uh, Progressive Democrats, would would throw her hat in the ring, but it doesn't seem like she's going to. So it looks like Hakeem Jeffries will likely be the leader on the Democratic side, at least, as long as the Republicans actually get their votes in order. Um, the Republicans sh should be able to secure that, but right now they have a lot of dissent among the, among their ranks. So um, right now it looks like the Republican candidate will be Kevin McCarthy and the Democratic candidate will be Hakeem Jeffries as Nancy Pelosi says she is going to step down from leadership. She will still be in Congress for at least two more years, uh, but just will be a normal member. She will not be in leadership for the next term, which begins in January. Uh, I probably think this, again, just thinking out loud here, nobody can predict the future. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is her last term, especially seeing how she's stepping down from leadership. You guys can let me know your thoughts here in the comment section. On the Senate side, we have Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. From the Democrats, uh, probably going to maintain the Senate majority leadership for the Democrats. And then for the Republican side, um, Mitch McConnell was reelected to the Republican side as well for the Republicans. So probably not going to really be any changes there for the Senate side as well. Although the Democrats could pick up an extra seat with the Georgia runoff races that is going on now. Another couple things that Congress is going to have to deal with uh, pretty soon is, number one, the government funding to prevent government shutdown here. You can see Congress on track to blow past the December 16th funding deadline. They're also going to have to deal with the government debt or the debt ceiling as well. Um, that's a two separate issues here. But here's the details on this. Just over two weeks separate Congress and a December 16th deadline to finalize new funding levels for fiscal year 2023, which began back in October. But appropriators are signaling they need more time as needed for talks and key disagreements over how to fund the government that remain unresolved. Uh, Senator Richard Shelby, a Republican from Alabama and top Republican on the Senate Appropriations Committee, are casting doubt already in remarks to reporters that Congress will have its work finished and will not meet the deadline. Saying, quote, I don't know if we'll get it done by the 16th. That's the date they'd like to get it done. But we might be here by till Christmas. Yeah. Speculation is rising in Washington over how long Congress plans to punt its funding deadline 
if it opts for another continuing resolution for the fiscal year. Yeah, this Congress is just unbelievable. That's just how they just can't get stuff done, right? Uh, you guys can let me know your thoughts here. But um, Congressman Chris Coons and uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, top Republicans, said they, quote, have had a lot of conversation, but that uh, they're not really getting much done. Bipartisan funding talks have stalled in weeks leading up to the midterm elections where, you know, nothing really got done. But those talks have struggled to pick up momentum since they've got back to Capitol Hill, despite an appetite on both sides to hash out a funding deal. There's also some talk about the child tax credits that, and the Republicans want to make a deal for this expiring corporate tax break for large corporations that's going to cost billions and billions of dollars. So Democrats want to, there's a lot of Democrats that have said that they're not going to renew these corporate tax breaks unless money goes to actual people in exchange. So one of the things would be to renew the child tax credits because basically the entire year has gone by and the child tax credits, which goes out to like 60 million children, um, obviously children can't work and um, it, it brought millions and millions of children out of poverty. And um, really it was one of the best initiatives in a while. And, uh, you know, Congress hasn't been able to agree on that. Remember that Democrats passed that on their own in the third stimulus check package last year. Not a single Republican voted on that. Um, but Republicans have typically been for that because um, it was actually former President Donald Trump and Republicans on their own that raised it in the 2017 tax cuts from $1,000 to $2,000. But then no Republicans would vote for it because Democrats raised it in their third stimulus check package through the reconciliation package as well. So both Republicans and Democrats raised it with the reconciliation package. And there's also multiple different Republican proposals to raise the Republican or to raise the child tax credit. So both parties want to do it. They actually just have to work together. You know, Congress actually working together. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid Congress actually works together, Republicans and Democrats. Oh my God, could we actually do that? You know, so um, Republicans want this uh, corporate tax cut that's expiring and for research and development that's expiring to be renewed. It's going to cost billions and billions of dollars. A lot of these Democrats are saying, no, we're not going to do it unless there's money for people also, not just corporations. And then um, some Republicans are saying, well, maybe we can get around these Democrats and try to slip it into the government funding deal. So one way or another, Republicans know that they're not going to be able to pass the um, the corporate tax cut that's expiring without dealing with the Democrats. That's pretty much how Congress has been for a while, even though the Democrats have had control of the House, Senate, and the, and the presidency. Remember that you needed 60 votes in the Senate. Okay, so... 99% of the bills, unless they were passed through reconciliation, even when the Republicans controlled the House, the Senate, and the presidency, there's always been that 60-vote rule in the Senate. So unless it was reconciliation, you still needed both parties. Okay, So Republicans know anything that needs to be passed. Democrats know anything that needs to be passed pretty much needs both parties. So... Some Republicans are saying, well, maybe we can get it in the government funding bill and slip it in there and negotiate for something. I don't I don't I don't know why they're against 
the child tax credits because really there's a lot of support for it. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see what goes down. There's really a lot of negotiating going on right now on a lot of different things. So I will keep you up to date here on this and everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. The, really, the kind of way that these things work is some of these deals kind of happen pretty quickly, literally within 24, 48 hours. Um, they'll be like, okay, how about we make a deal for this, that, or the other thing? And then literally within a day or two, they make a deal and it just kind of happens. <laughs> That's literally sometimes how any of these deals happen. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments and I will keep you up to date here. So make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. And really, they could deal for anything. It could be anything on the scope of anything up for negotiation. So uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be the child tax credits. It could be anything. So uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe. It's completely free. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will keep you up to date here. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click here to see my newest video about checks that are going out to millions of Americans that you might not even know about. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.